Robert Heffernan, Manja.tv, trying to stream live to the Manja Nation. Streaming live on Twitch, streaming live at Manja.tv. Uh, we're on the Cooking Vamp 91. Cooking Vamp 91, power tools in the kitchen. And uh, I was, it was pointed out to me that it could read Cooking Vamp 91 power tools in the kitchen. It's not 91 power tools in the kitchen. It's just power tools in the kitchen. All right. And so I reached out to, to some people and I asked them what their favorite or go-to power tool in the kitchen. And you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expound upon this because it's not just in the kitchen, right? Not just in the kitchen the power tools uh, are so useful, all right? Out on the road, car camping or out in the wilds, you know, Power tools have really brought uh, the ability to make your life easier, whether you're out on a hunt or you're car camping. And so I'm going to start it off easy. I'm sure you've all seen it before, but everybody knows a good, whoop, a good cordless drill, all right, especially out on the road car camping. You know, you can just go to, uh, you go to Goodwill and... Uh, You know, you got the whisk, right? So you're making scrambled eggs, campsi campfire side, no problem. You know, uh, you want to make uh, scrambled eggs pancake batter, you whip it up with the cordless power drill, ready to go. All right? And Goodwill, they got tons of these things, man. All kinds of different ones, odds and ends. We're going to make the cake batter, right? Bong, right there. Now, how about this? I was talking to uh, my carpenter today, and he said on the camping trip, he's actually used the cordless grill, drill as a rotisserie. All right, so you put the rotisserie on, you bounce it on something on the other side, and then you use a rubber band. Let's see if I can even do this. This is what he said he did. And hook that rubber band up. <laughs> All right, one more time. Get it tight. Anyway, I believe him. Rotis. All right, Bond. Super simple, super easy. More than a few people said their uh, their favorite power tool in the kitchen is a blowtorch. Now here at Magic TV, I got like a big one, a huge one, and uh, I don't think it's it's safe to bring the huge torch in. But the, the blowtorch is fantastic, and you need it in the kitchen if you want to make an authentic creme brulee. My brother DJ kills the creme brulee. And, you know, he's really good with the blowtorch because he's got a natural little wobble, and it, he really just has to just put it over there, right? And he gets a perfect glaze on the creme brulee with the blowtorch. All right? Another go-to for in the kitchen, all right, and... If you're out hunting or whatever, is a sawzall or reciprocating saw. Great must-have utensil for anybody in home construction or remodeling because you can tear apart a house with a sawzall, and that's about it. A sawzall, a sawzall, and a claw hammer, you can demo a house, all right? So I did this uh, little one. Uh, I made uh, split pea soup. I had this ham bone. You all know that I made the ham from scratch, and I had this ham bone. It was so big. Well, I couldn't even fit it in the pot, but the carpenter had left his sawzall on the job site. So, brand new blade. I'm sure, it's like semi food, you know, food safe. And uh, I'm gonna just let the, the video do the talking. Make uh, split pea soup. Now I made the ham, and look it, it's sitting in the clay crusette, but it ain't gonna fit. So, along with doing construction work. the sawzall to cut your moat, your, your meat. Look at that. All right? How great is that? Sawzall. All right? you, you know, you can use this too. You buy the big soup bones. Let's say you want to get to that marrow, man. I've been watching a lot of uh, cooking, uh, history of cooking on Manja TV. 
Um, and they do a lot with uh, bone marrow, man. So you get one of them big, long bone broth bones, and you can cut it with the Sawzall. So you have the, the small pieces of bone where the marrow is available. Phenomenal, man. Phenomenal to, to use the bone marrow. Um, how about you go to Costco, right, and they have a side of beef, like this huge thing of beef. It's the whole strip loin, the whole thing. So you can cut her up into a bunch of New York strip steaks, right? You, you know, you, you need like Arnold Schwarzenegger arms in order to you get that sawzall going with the long blade. You have that huge long. You can cut your own steaks with the sawzall. No problem. All right? Cuts it up easy. Um, what else do we got? More than a few people said an immersion blender, all right? Now, I think this is like one of these bullet things. I have one of those, and I, I tend to agree. They're unbelievable, man. For making soups and stuff, you make root vegetable soups, and you put it in that immersion blender. It's not really a power tool per se. I mean, really, the power tools are the torches, the sawzall. I'm not sure a skill saw is going to work in the kitchen so well. I'll tell you what would do a bandsaw, man. You could do your own. That's what they have basically in a in a uh, butcher shop is a badass bandsaw for cutting up your own cuts of meat. But it's really really down to the, the drill and the sawzall are the top two power tools for the kitchen. All right. Now, and now let's not forget the last power tool. All right. Sometimes you got to go old school. And again, I'm going to let the video do the talking on this one. And let's not forget the oldest power tool available. You know, making chicken piquant, you need to flatten that chicken nice and flat. I like making chicken piquant with thighs. Rocky Balboa. Bong. <laughs> all right. I hope you all enjoyed that uh, earlier today in the Manja Kitchen. Sometimes you just need to use your fist, man. Just get super, super easy. Super easy to take a chicken breast or a chicken thigh. If you need that thing thin, just a little, I put this one in a sandwich bag because they're a Ziploc bag because I didn't have any Saran or fresh out of Saran in the Manji kitchen. So it went into a, a bag. I, I generally use Saran wrap though, over the, the cutlets or whatever you want. And then you just hammer them, man. Just, you know, you get a good strong fist going. Super easy for the chicken piquant. Uh, Vernon Street Tap in Chicago, Tofano's. If you're ever there, you have to go to Tofano's. You have to. Cash only. Cash only. But the chicken piquant or the veal piquant at uh, Tofano's in Chicago, it's one of my favorite meals on the planet. In fact, after we wrap here, I'm going to go make it in the, uh, in the Manja Kitchen. Um, okay, so uh, pretty quick vamp here tonight. Uh, working on technology. I hope the sound was better than last week. Last week's sound was absolutely brutal. I completely apologize for it. Here's the thing about technology. I don't know what I did wrong between two weeks ago and last week and this week. I really don't. I just turned things on, and uh, this week the sound is good. The technology gods are, like, looking after me. So next week uh, we're going to have Ron from Clean Drop Mobile back on live, uh, and I think we're going to talk about uh, the order screw-up at the fast food place and what you can do and wait times. Uh, he's got a lot of uh, information and flow because of his uh, his app, Clean Drop Mobile. He gets just an incredible amount of data and uh, what people are experiencing. And the app is really geared towards food safety, which is such an important thing. Um, because, you know, you don't want to have them bad bugs in you. You know, I made us some kimchi. It's, it's downstairs kimchi in a way. Uh, i got to see if I can make it better than my brother who makes a pretty badass batch of kimchi. All right, another thing I'm working on is going to be a, uh, a segment where we're talking about music to cook to. All right, now, you know how in life people come in and out of your life, um, and, you know, for nobody's fault or whatever, people just move in and out of your life. You move away, you get a different job. I was uh, blessed to reconnect with a friend of mine, uh, Perry, 
What's up, Perry? I think he's watching. And you know, when I went to college, I had seven older brothers, man, and I thought I knew everything about rock and roll. With seven older brothers, by like 19, you know, 81, when I went to college, I thought I knew it all, man. I, I had seven older brothers of, of albums that I would pilfer through and play their music and listen to their music. And amazingly, you know, I went to Western Michigan and, and there was a whole nother huge influence of, of Motown. Now, they, my brothers played some Motown, don't get me wrong, right? But there, there's just another huge influence of, uh, of Motown. Now, I, you know, and my sister with the Carol King, I thought I had that covered too, you know? Um, but Perry... You know, I had heard of Lou Reed before. I had heard of Lou Reed, Walk on the Wild Side. Who hadn't heard of that song? But that's basically the only song that ever got played on the radio by Lou Reed. I never heard another song. I, 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 yeah, that's Lou Reed, Walk on the Wild Side. Yeah, yeah, great. Perry turned me on to the, to the breadth of Lou Reed and what a great rock and roll icon he is. You got to love Ru Lou Reed. Rest his soul. And like cooking... You find a song that you like or a recipe that you like, you learn it. You learn the, the lyrics, you learn the chords, just like in a recipe. You learn the ingredients, you look at the method. And then, you know, if you're like me, you're like, well, I'm going to do it my way. I, I got to do it my way. I don't want to do it your I can't make it like you. I can't sing it like I can't be Lou Reed. All right. I can't be Julia Child. Although sometimes I talk like her. You know, it just comes out. I don't even know where the hell it comes from. But, uh, so I want to have Perry on, and maybe he'll, maybe he will. And if he won't, I'll find somebody else because we're gonna to need to talk about music to cook to, and to broaden people's horizons on musical genre. You know, it's hard to do this in front of a live studio audience, all right? Because the feedback sometimes isn't isn't proactive. Anywho. <laughs> With, the, with, with technology now, I'm going to give myself a little bit, and you a little bit more of the mood of a little bit of live, live uh, music. And just on the way out, I'm going to play a little bit of Lou Reed, how I play Lou Reed, just to maybe motivate you. The cooking isn't that hard, all right? You just got to do it your way. You just got to you gotta make mistakes in the kitchen. You just got to get to it. Everybody needs to eat, man. And, uh, you know, we need to start cooking for each other more and hanging out more, all right? Who's ready to hang out? I'm ready to hang out. All right, so Lou Reed. <laughs> no, again, from the studio audience, I'm not playing Walk on the Wild Side. Standing on a corner, suitcase in my hand. Jackson and vest jeans in a corset. Me, I'm in a rock and roll band. We're riding in that Stutz Bearcat gym. You know those were different times. All the poets studied rules of us. And the ladies, they rolled their eyes. Sweet Jane, sweet Jane, sweet Jane. Me, I'm a banker. Jane, she's my clerk. Both of us, we save our money when we come home from work. We're sitting down by the fire, radio is playing. It's the march of the wooden soldiers. You can hear Jackie say, Sweet Jane, Sweet Jane, Sweet Jane. I'm not going to play the whole tune, but that gets you the idea. But you got to make it yours, man. Good, bad, and different. Believe me, after a good meal and some, uh, some cocktails uh, in the kitchen with everybody jamming along and singing, that's what's going to make it perfect, right? That's what's going to make it perfect is the vibe in the kitchen, all right? 
not that you strummed it perfectly or sang it perfectly not that you cooked it perfectly you know it's it's uh it's that's the orchestra that we're all trying to play in all right so listen do yourself a favor do yourself a favor and cook somebody a meal i didn't even mention the background in central oregon unbelievable scenery the 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 snow, it just hasn't stopped. And, and the Joshua tree, that's the Manja TV Joshua tree, just hanging out, man, and and thriving, even though half of it's dead, thriving, saying, no, I'm not dead yet. It's like this tree is like uh, a scene out of Monty Python. Well, you're almost, I'm not dead yet. And, and see how beautiful it is up on top of every morning, right? The top of that tree gets the sunlight first, so we get a wide array of just incredible birds that come up and hang out, watch the sunrise, get that first warmth of the sun on them. Totally cool. All right? So listen, you all have a great week. Thanks for stopping by. Next week we're back at it with Ron, a live segment, Clean Drop Mobile. Hopefully next week we're going to have the Twitter chat box available on the homepage on the side. All right? Now I know you're all multitaskers, so... What we're, what we're shooting for is a hybrid, all right? To so be able to watch the content on Manja TV, right? Uh, on the homepage at Manja TV. And the side panel is going to be a Twitter feed with the hashtag FoodVamp. Hashtag FoodVamp. And so you can watch, right? And then you can have your smartphone out or some other device with Twitter up. And you start, you can be hammering away on the Twitter chat. You can have your own conversation. You can ask questions. You can do whatever you want. It's a free country, all right? But that's what we're shooting for next week. Cooking Vamp 92. And uh, I'm still up for grabs on a topic for Cooking Vamp 92. You know what? Uh, still up for grabs. I did want to mention, last week I told you about my New Year's revolution of trying to eat 10 times more than the average person eats variety of foods in a year. All right? That's 30. So I'm shooting for 300. I've been keeping track of everything that I've eaten. Uh, and I'm up to 47 in a week. All right, so I'm already over the, the slackers that eat just 30 things in a year. I don't know who these people are, um, but you got to be able to eat more than that. All right, and we're going to put together a little, uh, a little spreadsheet. And uh, I challenge all you out in the imagination to try to eat 300 different things this year. All right? 300 different things. That's the goal. People used to eat 1,000 different things in a year. We're down to 30. We're going to kick it back up. All right? You all have a great week. Thanks for stopping by. See you next week.